Tonight's topic is the true redeemer, and the name of this show is Voices of Our Fathers. To my left is Elder Shadaniya ben Yisrael, and to my right, Elder Aharon ben Israel. Shalom. 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 So, tonight's topic being the true redeemer, we're going to deal with Hamashiach or the Messiah, Yahshua, and we're going to let Elder Shadaniya start off. Well, I believe uh, um, when we look at the fall of man, uh, we all understand that that man, because man did fall, man needed a redeemer. Okay. So, uh, because we needed a redeemer. That meant that someone had to come at a time unknown to man, of course, uh, when this Redeemer would come, or for that matter, who, who he would be. Uh, I submit to you that that Redeemer has come, and that Redeemer has been revealed. Okay. And that's what this show is about. It's about who that true Redeemer is and the true name of that Redeemer. Because there are many false redeemers, okay. false messiahs, mm. false anointed ones, and false saviors. Okay. So, Elder, you wanna, you wanna, take us to where we can start off uh, with that. Well, basically, what I, what we want to do, is we want to give you some background on what Elder was talking about the fall of man. Turn to Genesis, the second chapter. And we're going to start at verse 16. Okay. This is 2.16, Albert? Yeah, correct. All right. <clears throat> it says, And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil mm -hmm. thou shalt not eat of it mm -hmm. for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die stop right. here the commandment was given to Adam that of every tree of the garden he could freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil he shall not eat, mm -hmm. which, which lets you know that the body in which you're in, in the beginning, was created forever. That's right. But the Father told him mm -hmm. that in the day that you eat of this particular tree, you will surely die. But let's continue to read. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh Elohim said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him an helpmate for him. Stop. The father again, thinking mm -hmm. about man. Mm -hmm. Thinking about how man should go through this life. Mm -hmm. He said it's not good for man to be alone. So he would create man a helpmate. Mm -hmm. okay. But... Let's continue to read. And out of the ground, Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature that was the name thereof. And Adam gave the, gave the name to all cattle and to the fowls of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an helpmate for him. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people don't understand mm -hmm. what we're getting ready to continue to read. Mm -hmm. They really don't get this. Mm -hmm. It says, and Yahweh Elohim caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Mm -hmm. 
and the rib which Yahweh Elohim had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Mm -hmm. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Stop. Very important. Mm -hmm. Adam was made from the ground. Mm -hmm. okay. But woman was made from Adam. Adam. Entirely different concept here. She was the wound of man. Now, the instruction had already been given. Notice that we read up here that he told Adam the instruction. Mm -hmm. Now, it says, therefore, she shall, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And then it says, and they both were naked, the man and his wife and were not ashamed. Mm -hmm. Stop. Which lets you know. What did the father tell Adam? Huh? From the day that you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Huh? Knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, what does it say here? That they were not ashamed. They were naked. Mm -hmm. So that means that they had no knowledge of nakedness. Mm -hmm. Huh? So let's continue. Chapter 3, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye has, has Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Stop. Was that the commandment? Was that really what the commandment said? I don't think so. But that's for another time. It said, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, but that was the truth. Because the father said, You shall surely die. Satan told her the truth. Huh? But she surely would die. If you understand what I'm saying here. Can I interject something? Yeah. Here? Go going, right ahead. Okay, going back to where we initially be, began. Mm hmm. Genesis 2.16. Mm -hmm. And I want to start here because there's a, there's a few misconceptions of something that we just read here between 16 and 17. Yeah. 16 it says, And Yahweh commanded the man, mm -hmm. saying, Of every, <laughs> of every tree mm -hmm. in the garden you may freely eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, exception, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat it. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Yeah. Something you touched on earlier, you said, number one, you said that man at this point in time had eternal life. That's right. Because he had access to the tree of life. That's right. And here it, the father said, however, if you eat of the tree of good and evil, or the knowledge of good and evil, mm -hmm. you said, for in the day. Yep. The, the, my Bible says, for in the, the day, day. Yep. that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people, the first thing that they, that they gravitate to mm -hmm. is spiritual death. Mm -hmm. Now, when the father said this, you shall surely die. Some people think this is predominantly referring to spiritual death. Yeah. But it is not. not no. This is talking about physical, physical death. death. Yes, it is. Now, we know that when this happened, because we know in retrospect, this did happen. Yeah. This took place. Yeah. For they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
we know that on the very day that they did this, we know hmm. that they died spiritually. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we also know for a fact that they did Didn't not die, die, die that's physically. Right. That's right. So the father was talking about physical death. death. Yeah. And don't let the end there fool you because in here reflects has a has a has a has a profound effect a connection a connection with day mm -hmm. and day has a profound connection with dying yeah so we know that when the father said this mm -hmm. the father was referring to a point of time right in mm -hmm. that of a thousand years right that adam and eve would die within that thousand year period That's of course right. we know what happened was Adam died at 930 years. That's right. 70 years short of a full day. day. Right. So right. he still died within a day. So this is true. Right. I just wanted to get that clear because some people bounce, yeah. bounce back and forth between well, is this physical death or is it spiritual death? Is it right. spiritual death or is it physical death? Mm. No, no. Uh, verse five, chapter three, verse five. It's for it says, for Elohim doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as, as Elohim, knowing good and evil. Stop. Can I say something right here? Go doing? right now, ahead. when it says in the day here, <laughs> yeah. it's talking about on the very, very day. day. Mm -hmm. That's right. One day. That's right. One 24-hour okay. solar day, or if you want to call it a 12-hour day. Yeah. This is referring to, this is something that's immediate. This is immediate here. Yep. Whereas what we just read in Genesis 2, 17, so, yeah. that was not immediate. Yeah, Death was, was not immediate. No, it was Long wasn't. term. Right. Okay. That, that's, that's what Satan meant. Mm -hmm. See, right. that's exactly. why you have to understand the conversation here. See, Satan is cunning. That's why it says he was the most subtle beast in the field. That's right. Why? Because he always works with half truths. Absolutely. And remember, half the truth is still a lie. Still a lie. Has to be the complete truth. So you have to understand what he's doing here. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Stop. This is the point to where our topic really begins. The basis of our whole topic. That's right. Because now man has fallen. That's right. right. Once he partook, the sin or the transgression or the breaking of the law that the father set out, that's when it took place, when he ate. Right. Now we got a problem. Big problem. Yes, we do. Houston, we got a problem. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And, Yah and, they, and they heard the voice of Yahweh Elohim walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Mm -hmm. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh Elohim among the trees of the garden. And Yahweh Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shalt not eat? Again, he caught. Huh? Now there's a big problem. Because let's go down to verse, you know what, let's go to verse 14. 
chapter 3? Yes. Let's go to 14. And Yahweh Elohim said unto the serpent, mm -hmm. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. And it says, and I will put enmity between thee mm -hmm. and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy con conception. Mm -hmm. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and their desire shall, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Stop. Let's go back. Because what does it say in 15? It says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy heel, thy head, and it shall bruise thy heel. Again, here mm -hmm. is the first mention that we can really distinguish mm -hmm. of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Because now we have something to stand in the gap for us. There was nothing before this. We was just out there. But the Father giving us a way back mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But most people don't understand that. So let's go down to what? Let's see. Because we, we, we need to see You know what? What were you trying to point out? There? No. If I do that, then, then we'll miss what I want to say. See, we got, we got to understand that the Father gave us, mm -hmm. in this here, he gave us away, but also at the same time, he made us work now. Mm -hmm. We got to work. Huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I know. I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And I'm trying to figure out where it would be the best place to show this well, without reading all of this. Well, well you know, the other thing is, is if I can, if I can kind of, you know, lay the groundwork here. When we look at what has transpired here already. The Father has created man. Again, when we went to Genesis 2, 16 in the beginning, mm -hmm. the Father had already given man eternal life. Right. Now, at this point in time, Adam did not have to do anything, anything right. to achieve eternal life. That's right. Because he had already given Give it to him. To him. So yeah. when we look at Adam... Adam is perhaps the greatest example. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, his, in his most purest form, Adam is the greatest example of grace. Because Adam did not do anything to, to merit or to deserve right. eternal life. He is the greatest example. Right. Now, Adam... And Eve had responsibilities, mm -hmm. but Adam and Eve did absolutely nothing <laughs> to deserve the gift of eternal life. That's right. Eating from this, this, this tree called the tree of life. That's right. mm -hmm. Now, we read in 17 that if you, if you fall, if you eat, you shall surely die. We know that man, what? Man did fall. Right. right. So when man fell, now, the father, I'm sure the father was very upset. 
obviously he was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At the point of being upset with man and the fall of man, mm -hmm. the father then was going to either do one of two things. He was either going to trash this this thing or this uh, this thing called man. Mm -hmm. He was going to destroy him or he was going to give him a break. So Yah decided, the Father decided that I love my creation. Yeah. I love my creation so much, for he loved so much, he loved the world so much, mm -hmm. that he what? Gave his only begotten son. But at that point, the Father had already decided that. Yeah, right. When the Father decided to continue this project called man, Yah knew that he had that man had to have a redeemer That's because right. he knew what his whole entire plan was. That's right. So when the father then decided to, to continue on with this project that he called man, because he loved man in his creation, talking about his creation, the heavens, the stars, mm -hmm. the moon, the mountains, the skies, and what have you. Along with man, the father then decided, well, this time it will not be as easy for man. Yeah. Because man will now have to do something for me. Yeah. He will have to do something for me yeah. in order to get <laughs> eternal work. life. Right. Yeah. He's got to obey me. He's got to show me something. Because Adam didn't have to do that to get it. Right. But now that we are on the other side of Adam, which we are, mm -hmm. and, and man's fall, man has to do something. You have to be willing to do what the Father asks of you. Mm -hmm. Be a, become a believer and obey his word. That's right. He laid it out there for you. Mm -hmm. This is what you You choose this or you choose that. You make the choice. We all have a choice in the matter. We can say yes, that we're going to believe. Yes, we're going to obey. Or we can say no, I'm not going to believe. No, I'm not going to obey. So now we see that we have to make a decision because the Father now has laid it out there for us. Mm -hmm. So the Father knew about the Redeemer. Yeah. We didn't know about the Redeemer. No. The Father knew who the Redeemer was going to be, but we didn't know who the Redeemer was going to be. No. And we knew, I mean, even the Redeemer himself, at that point in time, may have known that he was a Redeemer, but he didn't know when it was time to come or when he shall return again. But the thing is, is that we know now, looking at all of this, again, mm -hmm. in retrospect, we see that we needed a Redeemer, and Yah sent the Redeemer now to, to the people of the world. You know, to some people that redeem is one thing. Other mm. people, it's something else. Other people that are out there, they're still waiting for the for Redeemer, the Redeemer yeah. or the Messiah. Mm. They're still waiting because they don't believe he ever came. But, you know, like I said, so to different people, you know, they see different things. But we know the truth. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So I, I just wanted to reflect that. Right. Well, they're very yeah. well put. But here... In 322. 322. Right. Mm -hmm. It says, And Yahweh Elohim said, Now that man has become like one of us, knowing good and bad, I'm reading out of the Tanakh now. Mm -hmm. It says, What if he should stretch out his hand mm -hmm. and take also from the tree of life and eat? And live forever. Mm -hmm. Stop. Okay. That's a good point. Over. This is the point to where now you have to work. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Because here, as we continue to read, mm -hmm. it says, So Yahweh Elohim banished him from the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. to till the soil mm -hmm. from which he was taken. Mm -hmm. He drove the man out 
and stationed east of the Garden of Eden, the cherubim and the flaming uh, every t ever turning sword mm -hmm. to guard the way to the tree of life. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say something to other. Go right ahead. What you just read right here in mm -hmm. in 22. Mm -hmm. We know truly. We know that we know that sin was the result. Becoming sin was why. You know this all came about. But he, he, here's what I really want to say here. Mm -hmm. Here in 22 is the chief reason why Adam was thrown out, or that's man was thrown out of the garden. That's right. It wasn't so much that man had sinned. Right. <laughs> like a lot of people think, well, he, he was thrown out of the garden because he sinned. No. No. That's not the chief reason why. No. The chief reason why the father threw Adam out of the Garden of Eden, the garden of Eden is because he said, what else? He, he said, he said, and now yeah. lest he put out his hand right. and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. In the deprived condition. In a deprived, in a, 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 a <laughs> terrible condition. That's why. Because if Adam had got back to that tree in sin, he would have lived forever. That's what the book says. Right. True. We. This is, exactly, and this is where your eternal life ultimately comes from. It comes from the tree. That's right. True. And then, like in, like in the Apocrypha, it says that the, the fruit, the eternal fruit, yes. this is what gives you life. This is your ultimate goal, but you can only get that ultimate goal through the blood. That's, that's why we're talking about redemption. Uh, right. A lot of people may not understand the definition of redemption. Mm -hmm. uh, to redeem something is to get back something that was once lost. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't understand what was lost mm -hmm. or, or what has to be getting, gotten back, mm -hmm. you may miss out on, on, this, on the focal. Mm -hmm. um, you got to understand that by design, um, the Father's design uh, is much, much different than the design in which we live now. Mm -hmm. This is not the Father's design. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that because mm -hmm. um, they don't understand that Satan is the prince of this world. Mm -hmm. And being the prince of this world, there are things that you experience during your daily life that has nothing to do with the Father's plan for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Father's plan was never for you to live in an environment full of concrete and steel. I mean, if you, if you ever come in contact by force with one of those elements, you know you weren't designed for that. You weren't designed to, to, to be stressed out about a job or about uh, how you're going to pay this and that mm -hmm. and how you're going to... Um, you know, find shelter mm -hmm. because obviously by this design, there was no pur there was no purpose for that. That's right. You sure These people didn't even have a, a reason to even wear clothing. That's right. We weren't even supposed to worry about where our next meal coming from. Right. right. Our food. So yeah. the father's yeah. design was a it, out the tree. it was a perfect it. design. That's right. right. Absolutely correct. So therefore, man lost a lot. Mm. Yeah. Okay. By that fall, he fell hard. And the thing is, this, this environment in which he was thrown out of, that's the environment set up in the kingdom to come. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay? Right. So this is this redemption. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. have a lot to get back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because, <laughs> because what we're doing now, yeah. we're fighting uh, in an environment that has nothing to do with us being created. And what I mean is, you know, us being formed, this has nothing to do with the original design. We're in a matrix. That's right. This, this has nothing to do with the original design. The word redeem mm -hmm. in the Strong's Concordance is 1350. That's one word. It's Gaal. It says a prime root to redeem mm -hmm. according to the oriental law of kinship. In addition, it says to be 
the next of kin. And as such, to buy back a relative property, mm -hmm. marry his widow, mm -hmm. and cetera. In any wise, it says, at all, avenger, deliverer, do perform the part of next of kin. Mm -hmm. Kinsman, purchase, ransom, redeemer, revenger. The second word from the Strong's Concordance is 6299. It says, padal, mm -hmm. a prime root, to serve, i.e., ransom, to release, preserve, at all, deliver, by any means, ransom, that are to be. Let be redeemed, rescue, mm -hmm. surely. Who fits that? Huh? There's one person that does. Mm -hmm. Turn to Isaiah, the seventh chapter. Isaiah 7. And we're going to start at verse 10. It says, Moreover, Yahweh spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from Yahweh your El. Ask it either in the depths or in the heights above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Then he said, Hear now, O house of Dawi, is it a small thing? For you to weary men, but will you weary my Elohim also? Mm -hmm. Therefore, Yahweh himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. Curds and honey he shall eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that you dread will be forsaken by both her kings. Yahweh will bring the king of Assyria upon you and your people and your father's house. Mm -hmm. Days that have not come since the days that Ephraim departed from Yehuda. And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh will whistle by the fly that is the farthest part of the river of Egypt. And for the bee that is in the land of Assyria, they will come and all them will rest in the desolate valley and in the clefts of the rock and on, the, on all thorns and in all pastures. Mm -hmm. But in the same day, Yahweh will shave with the, with the hired razor, with those from beyond the river, with the king of Assyria, the heads and the hair of the legs, mm -hmm. and will also remove the beard. It shall be in that day that a man will keep alive a young cow and two sheep, so it shall be from the abundance of milk they give, that he will eat curd, for the curd and honey everyone will eat who is left in the land. Now, what was happening here, the father was finna bring some calamity mm -hmm. upon Israel. But he also, within this context, mm -hmm. said that a sign would come along. This sign would be the redemption if you understand, when he said to call him Manuel, meaning Elohim is with us, mm -hmm. to come and to do what? Awaken Israel. That's right. So let's find out if that came to be. 
But first, before we go there, no, let's go there first and then we'll come back. Turn to Matthew. The first chapter. Let's start at verse 18. Matthew 1, 18. It says, Now the birth of, birth of Yahshua was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Yosef, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Stop. Mm -hmm. Here is the sign which was prophesied to be. Mm -hmm. Let's continue to read. It says, Then you'll save her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to put to make a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of Yahweh appeared to him in a dream, saying, Yosef, son of Dawid. Do not be afraid to take to you Mar Miriam, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yahshua, for he will save his people from their sin. Mm -hmm. Stop. Mm -hmm. Who sinned? Adam. Who came to save the people from their sin? Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Huh? Okay. Doesn't it follow the sign that Ahaz was given mm -hmm. now manifested itself in a later time? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's that true. I didn't write this. <laughs> That's true. And you also got to remember that uh, Israel itself, the nation, shall be redeemed and is used as part of the redemption. That's right. So Israel also being the first son of Yah mm -hmm. right. is instrumental in this process of redemption Absolutely. in terms of bringing people and to the understanding of who Yah is. Correct. Who Yahshua is. That's right. So, so there's a lot of things going on at one time. Right. That, that, that maybe this show can't even, you know, encompass in just one sitting or two cities. Oh, no. This, re this redemption thing is large. Yes, it is. Beyond uh, the, the, you know, just common understanding. Mm -hmm. So... Being uh, a people that has lost so much, because if you look around, Israel is in disarray. Of course we are. And as a whole, it looks bleak for Israel. Mm -hmm. That's why it talks about a remnant. Mm -hmm. And being the, a part of the remnant, as we sit here at this table, the Father has graced us with the knowledge of who we are. Right. Absolutely. So that we can help somebody else understand who they are. Right. Because we build in a nation. Right. Exactly. So that the redemption uh, of, of this nation and the redemption of, of man. That's right. Mm -hmm. Can proceed. That's right. And this thing, the dynamics behind this is huge. Yes, it is. When you really think about it. Okay, I'm going to continue to read. It says, so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Yahweh 
through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child mm -hmm. and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated Elohim with us. Mm -hmm. The same as what we read in Isaiah. It continues to follow. Exactly. But also, let's go back to Isaiah. Mm -hmm. This time we want to go to the ninth chapter. Can we can we go somewhere before that other? Sure. How about we go because we just read in Matthew about the actual event. Yeah. So, if we just read about the actual event, let's travel back to a time before the actual event had even taken place, but yet the actual event was prophesied. Oh, you can, uh, Deuteronomy? No, we'll go, let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Micah. Oh, okay. Because we were talking, we we were, I mean, we we're gonna go specifics here. Mm -hmm. we, were talk, we were talking about the very birth in Matthew, yeah. the very event, which is the birth. So let's go to a prophecy concerning the very birth. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Micah. Um, let me Micah the fifth chapter. Yeah. <laughs> This Everybody. Is fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Michael 5, let's, read, let's begin with 1. It okay. said, Now gather yourself in troops, mm -hmm. O daughter of troops. Mm -hmm. He has laid siege against us. Mm -hmm. They will strike the judge of Israel mm -hmm. with a rod on the cheek. Mm -hmm. Says the elder. That's right. <laughs> the topic here, beginning in verse 2, is the coming Mashiach. Or That's the it. coming Messiah. That's it. Verse 2 says, But you, but you, Bethlehem Ephrata, mm -hmm. though you are little among the thousands of Yehuda yeah. or Judah, yet out of you shall come, yet out of you, Bethlehem Ephrata, That's shall right. come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, that's right. whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting. That's right. From everlasting. That's right. This is so heavy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because this prophecy here is so accurate that not because when it talks about a birth of the one who is to be the ruler in Israel. Mm -hmm. It gives you the exact place where he was to be born. Mm -hmm. Because here when it says, though you are little among the thousands of Yehuda, mm -hmm. what that's saying is there are so many places, yep. <laughs> physical places in Yehuda that are called Bethlehem mm -hmm. or Bethlehem yeah. in Yehuda that he even pins part the exact one, which is Ephrata. Right. He could, I mean, this is, this, this is astounding here. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he even gives you the exact city, mm -hmm. because there are many Bethlehems in Yehuda or in Judah. Mm -hmm. He gives you the exact Bethlehem, Ephrata. And not only does he say that, Though you are little among the nations, the thousands of Yehuda, he said, yet I, you shall come forth to me, the one to be ruler in Israel. Then it says here, which is very fascinating. He says, whose goings, whose goings mm -hmm. forth are from old. Yep. Then it says, from everlasting. Yep. 
Now, a lot of people don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to explain to you what it means. Mm -hmm. When it says, who's going forth are from old, mm -hmm. this is saying whoever this ruler is has, this is saying that he has been in existence or he has existed for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. yep. Since times of old. Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, so far in times from um, from old, he says, from everlasting. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand how that got in there. What's the, what's the significance of from everlasting? Well, I'm going to tell you about the word everlasting. Everlasting is a word that not only do you use this word in the context of from today forward, which is forever, but everlasting is a word that not only goes forward in time, but everlasting is a word that goes backwards, backwards. in time. Yeah. So when it says from everlasting, it's talking about backwards in time, this ruler existed. Yeah. So far from old that he existed before the world was even created. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so he is from what? From everlasting backwards yeah. to everlasting forward. Forward, that's right. Like the Father. Mm -hmm. Everlasting to everlasting. everlasting. So from old or from behind or to what? To forward, forward or yeah. backwards to forward. Yeah. So that's what that means. That's what he's referring to here. So that word everlasting is somewhat tricky, but a lot of people don't realize that it is a word that goes both ways. Mm -hmm. Right. And I just want to expound that because it was here in Micah. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Kazakiel brought up a, another point mm -hmm. about Israel, mm -hmm. who Israel is. Mm -hmm. If you understand that Israel was chosen mm -hmm. to carry the Father's word right. to the rest to the rest of the sons and daughters of Adam, mm -hmm. so that they could know who he was. Mm -hmm. okay. That's why he brought Israel out right. of bondage with a mighty hand. Mm -hmm. But the leader that led the children of Israel out. Moshe also spoke of a prophecy. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right. Turn to Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. Mm -hmm. Speaking about the same yeah. person yes. that we just got through talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's start at verse 15, 1815. 1815. Mm -hmm. It says, Yahweh your El will raise up for you a prophet mm -hmm. like me from your midst. Didn't it say that he would come from Bethlehem, Ephrata, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. out of Yehuda? Mm -hmm. Moshe is talking to these same people. Mm -hmm. He says, Yahuwah will raise up for you a prophet like me mm -hmm. from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear according to all your desires of Yahweh your El in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh my El, nor let me see this great fire anymore, lest I die. What is that saying? The Father spoke to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. It scared them to death. They saw the mountain on fire. They heard the voice. They told Moshe, hey, don't let, hey, you speak to him and then tell us. Yeah, we'll do what he say. Do. We'll do exactly what he say do. Mm -hmm. So Moshe told them that down the line, another prophet will come just like me whom the Father spoke to, and he going to speak to you 
through him. Mm -hmm. And he will put his words in, in his, his mouth. mouth. Right, because right, we finna read this now. Mm -hmm. And then it says, and Yahweh said to me, mm -hmm. what they have spoken is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you mm -hmm. from among their brethren mm -hmm. and will put my words in his mouth mm -hmm. and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Mm -hmm. And it shall be that whosoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, mm -hmm. I will require of it of him. Stop. Turn to John. Mm -hmm. I knew you were going there. <laughs> yeah. he, always, he always said that. It's not me talking. That's right. <laughs> Fill up the prophet. It said that he would raise up a prophet mm -hmm. just like Moshe. Mm -hmm. But now, if you if you remember, Yahshua did all kinds of miracles. Mm -hmm. He performed all kinds of things to show these people that he was from the Father. Mm -hmm. But the thing that he did that really, I think, really struck him was what we're finna really hear. John, the 11th chapter. We're gonna start. You know what? We're gonna read. We're gonna start at verse one. Another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says the death of Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the the feet, who anointed Yahweh with mm -hmm. fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Mm -hmm. Therefore the sister sent to him, saying, Master, behold, he whom you love is sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When Yahshua heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of Elohim, that the son of Elohim may be glorified through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now Yahshua loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed out two more days in the place where he was. Mm -hmm. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the the, the Yahudians mm -hmm. sought to stone you, and and you are going there again. Yahshua answered, "Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walk in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night." He stumbles because the light is not in him. Mm -hmm. These things he said, and after that, he said to them, O oh friend, Lazarus, sleep, but I go that I may wake him. Now stop. Mm -hmm. Now we know that they say Lazarus was dead, but what mm -hmm. did Yahshua say? Remember now, listen to this. Mm -hmm. He said, O friend Lazarus sleeps, 
but I go that I may wake him. Mm -hmm. Then his disciples said, Master, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Yahshua spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking a rest and sleep. Mm -hmm. Then Yahshua said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sake that I was not mm -hmm. there, that you may believe, nevertheless, let us go to him. Mm -hmm. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to the fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. So when Yahshua came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Mm -hmm. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Yahudins had joined the woman around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now, Martha, as soon as she heard that Yahshua was coming, went and met him. But Mary... But Mary was sitting in the house. Mm -hmm. Now Martha said to Yahshua, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Isn't that what he just told him up <laughs> a few sentences ago? Mm -hmm. He said, but even now, I know that whatever you ask of Elohim, mm -hmm. huh, Elohim will give you. Yahshua said to her, your brother will rise again. Listen to this. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Mm -hmm. Yahshua said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He, what was he telling her? Go ahead. Redemption came through him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. He who believes in me Though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Mm -hmm. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, master, I believe that you are Hamashiach, the son of Elohim, who is to come into the world. 